I want to talk about an extremely important panel, and that's the properties panel. So let me bring this over here, and we're over in the properties panel right here. And uh, everything happens here as far as gaining access to stuff. And uh, in the properties panel, there's also a library. So I'm going to come along here. See, I hit Windows. If something's not showing, and you're going to learn all these shortcuts right here, right? But if something's not showing, I can actually hit this Windows panel and bring it up. So I'm going to control here. Make sure you hit that Windows panel. Click on that and just go to a library. I want that to show. The library, and notice what's happening. These are floating panels. I can actually grab this and I can drag this around the screen. See that? Moving it wherever I want to. Now, this can drive you nuts because you can have all these panels just all over the place. Well, this is really good if you have a double monitor. Do you ever work on double monitors before? And so you can have one on one side and one on this side. You can be running animation on one side and coding on the That's other side. It's for rich people. No, it's for everybody. <laughs> you don't have a money for a double monitor? No. Okay. All right. Great. Well, at work, I actually have a double monitor, and it's full both sides. I mean, it's just packed. And so uh, we, we use them a lot. So uh, real quick here, uh, I didn't have the library panel up there, but I actually came, went to Windows, and I went to, uh, pro I went to the, uh, just clicked on that. But look at that. What does that say? Control L. So if you want the library, you got to learn those shortcut keys. I'm going to hammer them into you. Just hit Control L. It went away. Control L. It came back. Okay? So if you want to toggle all that stuff, go very fast as opposed to going like that. Well, wait a second. Let's take a look at that. Control L. Control L. That was uh, one step. Right? Control L. Two, two steps. Two presses. Let's try this. Window, one press. Library, two presses. Okay, I got it up. But what, a sec what did I have to do? I had to move my finger. That's going to wear me out. I'm going to get finger depression. Okay, my finger will come home depressed. No, I, it's, I'm serious. You've got if the more you can cut things down, the faster and more efficient you can do things. Okay, matters. Okay, so there we go. And so this properties panel is going to be very important. We're going to actually fill this library up with resources, and we'll be able to drag resources over here and work with them. Now let me show you how to make a resource real quick, just so we can put something in the library. I'm going to click on this uh, square right here. I'm going to turn this into a movie clip. So if I right-click on the screen, I can go Convert to Symbol. Now, you can't see that, so let me show you another way to do that. Let's double-click on that. Go to Modify, go to Convert Symbol, and you can actually change this to a movie clip. We're going to call this Square. Now, I haven't told you what a movie clip is yet, but there's certain very important things like a sprite, a movie clip, a graphic. Okay, Movie clips basically are objects, like, uh, like in a sense, flash objects that have a timeline. So the movie clip itself has its own timeline. And so when I did that, look what I have in the library. What does it say? Square. Square. Ooh. I'm going to drag it to the stage. Woohoo! I have another one. Wait a second. Woohoo! Oh, that's <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> Woohoo! I have another one. Woohoo! I have another one. In a sense, what I'm doing, it's the same square, but it, you know what I'm saying? But I have many of them. So what I'm doing, I'm doing something called instantiation. When you create one graphical object, you don't have to create that graphical object over and over again. The computer knows how to make a copy of it or instantiate it. So all of these objects right here are coming from what? The same square. Now, if I was to come along here and double click on this, for example, I'm going to come over here to the Tools panel, hit this, and I was to shrink this a little bit. All my squares shrunk. You saw that? Mm -hmm. So since they are copies of each other, the instantiation, whatever I do to one is done to the other. Now, you don't have to, that doesn't work like that always. You can parent in a sense. You can have uh, what you do to a higher thing happens to a lower. What you do to a lower doesn't happen to the higher. There's all types of combinations, okay? So and we're just going to delete the first one, they'll all delete. Let's see what happens. Woohoo, man. You're, you are an instantiation genius already. <laughs> <laughs> now, notice what happened, too. I actually have this little breadcrumbing that's happening here. We're going to learn more about that. But when I go inside a movie, a flash keeps track of where I'm at. So if I want to go back to the main scene, I'm going to click on that. It takes me back to the main scene. And then I can start adding all my movie clips again. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these squares right here and delete everything from the stage. I just basically wanted to show you this library. Pretty cool, huh? And I'll just redraw it. And this time let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's put a square here. There you go. That wasn't interesting. Let's go back in our scene. We're going to use our breadcrumbs to go back to the scene. So I want to get out of the movie clip, back to the, and you probably don't know what I'm talking about yet. That's okay. Go back to the scene. Here I am. And let's come along here and look at this little object right here. This is the 3D rotate. I can actually now rotate this in 3D. Now that's a cool thing in Flash. It just came along with the new CS5 version. And I'm going to tell you in the next version, CS6, Flash 11, you're going to be making 3D games.
right. You can make them now, but not efficiently. You'll be able to coming up. And you'll be able to animate in 3D. You like that? It's pretty cool, huh? Wow! This is the first class, and I've got you guys impressed. This is fantastic. He's already, so I can he's already got a game made. He just, I guess, means that now. All right. All right. So anyway, cool. So anyway, you're in 3D. You can rotate things. You can move things around. So what I've been talking about this whole time as we've been doing this lesson is, you know, I've been, oh, look at that. I just moved around. See, he's got this really cool thing you can mess around with. Let's get off of that real quick and go back to this pointer tool. Let's move this out of the way over here. Now, one of the things I've been talking about the whole time is, is this little toolbar right here. And you see I've been going here and I haven't been telling you, hey, that's the toolbar. Okay? And in this toolbar, there's all types of cool stuff, all right? And uh, when I first started Flash, there weren't all these, all these things. But not only do you have these toolbars now, what Adobe has done is kind of integrated all this software, Photoshop and Flash and Illustrator, such that they all kind of have the same effect. So with these objects that you can draw and all with these two toolbars, you can also put effects on. I want to show you talk, talk about effects in the next lesson, okay? But the cool thing about this is, you once again, you saw I just drew something and rotated. So you can, you have uh, lots of things that you can do here. You have a pencil, so you can draw draw with that. Uh, you have a, a pen. You can do some pen tracing. We're going to talk about what that means. That's a little bit different than what you might think. These are Bezier curves that you're seeing on the screen there. Uh, you got line tools. So I can just draw straight lines. Okay. You got text tools, so I can type in stuff like a name, for example. My uh, name is, for example. You have, uh, we saw the drawing tools. I can do a square, an oval, uh, a rectangle, a poly star. So you can actually make little stars. Any shape. Yep. Stars if you want to it, for example. Pencil tool, we saw that, right? Draw a little pencil. Uh, you got a brush, so you can actually do a little bit of painting here. And actually, you can actually paint not just a brush now. You can actually paint objects. A uh, little bone here. We're going to learn about bone animation. Here's a little paint can. You'll be using that in a sense to fill uh, to fill things. So let's show you how to fill real quick. So I come along here. This little pencil here, that's the actual outline. That's the color of the outline. This right here, this is the fill bucket is the color of the fill. So if I want to change the fill color, I just click on that. Boy, I thought I was an idiot there for a second. I don't, do I know anything about Flash? I've been doing it for years. Okay, one second. So I'm going to come along here. We're going to hit this little fill button. I'm going to select a fill color here. What color do you guys want? Red. Okay, let's go ahead and do a red. So if I come along here at the fill button, I select a little red here. And then now I use my little fill bucket. Ta-da! I change the color. Okay. So if I want to change the outline, then I'd use this one right here. And that's the outline because it's thrown a pencil. So let's go ahead and do blue. So I come along here and I kind of hit that fill on the outline. There you go. You can kind of see it change, right? Okay, so you're going to learn about a lot about drawing. There's a lot of drawing tools here in Flash. Uh, it's just so it's really nice. And many times, you know what's going to happen is I'm so used to Flash, is a lot of uh, artists will go to Designer or Illustrator or or to uh, Photoshop. I'll do a lot of drawing just in Flash, you know, just because when I'm making illustrations and diagrams, it just I'm so used to it. But also, you want to get good with uh, Photoshop and also with Illustrator as you move on in, in your career to do a lot of your drawings and diagrams in. So anyway. That's kind of an introduction here. Let me see if we got everything. We talked about uh, the stage, which we've now put a lot of stuff on. We've talked about the toolbar, which you'll be using a lot. We talked about the timeline and making layers. The last thing I want to talk about is this properties panel and how to change some things in Flash. Now, very, very important, I'm going to give you guys a hard, hard lesson, is whenever you start a web project, you know what the first question I ask? After my client tells me all about the exciting things they want to do, what's your budget? I asked, no. <laughs> How much are you going to pay me? I, okay, I agree with that. But one of the things I really want to know is, and this becomes very important, what's the screen size? How big is it? All right. And I want to tell you a sad, sad story. I once had a movie studio. I actually, it was a, yeah, movie production studio. Want to do a service ad for the college. This is shameful because they're doing movies. It was actually a TV station. This TV station wants to do a service ad, so it is this beautiful service ad. But I asked the first question at the beginning of the meeting, what's the pixel size? And what's the format? What do you want it in? I said, don't worry about it. OK, oh, great. So I walk away, I do this beautiful uh, animation. It's great. They love it. And, and they said, oh, by the way, we need this size, and we need it in this format. Well, you know what? I didn't have that format, and it never went. So you need to make sure that when you start a project, oh, that's painful to my heart. When you start a project, that you guys, what, one, you know, the pixel size, and the final format, okay? 
because it's going to take you a long way. Because when you start doing all this work in Flash, unless you make it flexible and resizable, you're going to be stuck with a certain size.